The HSE said that the risk to the general public following confirmation of the first case of COVID-19 here is still low, but this risk may change. This is the calm before the storm. Why should healthy people be by law mandated to wear a mask when there is not one shred of evidence to substantiate the fact that healthy people and people who are asymptomatic which means people who have no symptoms spread any COVID-19 virus. Why is our government ignoring real science? This survey, which we put together, aims to find out people's thoughts and opinions on COVID-19. Of the people surveyed, it shows that 97% believe in COVID-19. 63% of people were personally affected by COVID. 84% said they haven't had COVID-19. 96% of people knew somebody who has had it. 89% of people believe masks are necessary. Out of the 11% who didn't think masks were necessary, one person said, We don't take notice to how often we touch our masks without sanitizing our hands. Therefore, the masks become contaminated and the risk of catching COVID-19 is higher. 87% of people said they would get the vaccine. Of the other 13%, people either feared the side effects or would only get the vaccine if they needed it to travel. Sorry, we're just taking my glasses. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name and what age are you? My name is Bernadette Daly and I'm 87 years young. So I'm Emma Doyle. I'm 24. Well, my name is Carmel Feeney. Um, I live on the north side of Dublin. I'm in Dublin 5 and I'm a critical care nurse in a very busy Dublin Academic Hospital. So I'm Michelle Daly. Um, I'm from Australia, from Sydney, the north, north shore of Sydney. My name's Karen Brown. I am a health reporter in Massachusetts in the United States. I'm Vlad Galadnik, 22 years old, Dublin, Ireland. Now, I also understand this, masks help prevent it, but it's not even a proven fact that they help prevent it, to be honest. It, it should be a choice to wear a mask if you feel like you're not able, your immune system isn't strong enough, wear a mask. If you feel like you might die if you catch it, take the vaccine. But it shouldn't be mandatory. Absolutely. I think masks are very much, COVID is very much, um, it's a change of our life. It's a change about the way we do things. It's a, base, it's a change about how we look and it's very much a change on our practice. You're changing your practices, your hygiene, your cough etiquette, you're keeping your space and part of that is your mask. And it's all very much, it all comes together. If you have your mask on, your habits are better. Well, it's not such a matter of whether I think they do, but whether the studies have shown that they do. You know, if, if after study after study and medical expert after medical expert had looked at the transmission rate and found that putting on a mask doesn't change the transmission rate, I would say, okay, they're a pain to wear, I'm not gonna bother. But study after study and expert after expert, and these are not people that have stocks in the mask industry. They're people that just wanna stop this illness. And um, the data shows that it does a tremendous job to stop infection, and it's so easy. So I can't imagine a reason not to wear a mask, given what all of the scientific research says. And I listen to scientists. Some people don't listen to scientists, and I don't know what you say to those people. We've been told by all the experts, all the medical experts, that they do help it, at least the sneezing and coughing. So... I feel that I feel masks are very necessary. 
a lot of people weren't informed at the beginning enough of the the necessity it was to have a mask, you know. It didn't seem such a serious thing to, at the beginning, you know. Yes, absolutely. Um, particularly as more information has come that it's not fomite spread, it's not spread by touching things as much as they thought right at the start. How do you feel about people that refuse to wear the masks? Um, how do I feel? Um, I feel angry. If you don't want to wear a mask um, for whatever reason you don't want to wear it, you know, I have to be respectful of that. But when it infringes on me and infringes on other people, that's when I take the issue with it. I feel they're very foolish. That's the first thing I feel about them. And I mean, they might be lucky, I might never get it, but I do feel they're foolish. And I feel they're, they're fetching other people then, maybe you see somebody that hasn't a mask and you kind of walk by the way, it worries you that maybe they gave you something, you know. And like the, there is very, very, very high incidence of COVID. So, I mean, there must be some reason for it. Um, I find the people who don't wear masks or refuse to wear them, just, it's selfish. And, and also it's just the law. Well, I think that there's different motivations. I think some people are just um, uneducated or possibly ignorant and they choose not to read the data. They choose not to be informed. Um, and I find that extremely frustrating. Um, but I have some sympathy if you are really in, in a situation in which you just don't have access to information. Then there are people who are doing this from a political point of view. There's a lot of uh, politicians, especially in our country, especially among the Republican Party, um, who have seen this as a political, as a way to get voters. I don't really know how that works, but it's become this litmus test, because you know, for personal freedom. And I believe these, um, a lot of these politicians very much believe that masks work, but they want to get reelected. And so they kind of, you know, toe the party line. And our former president, Trump was one of the worst examples of that. Um, and I think you, you know, a lot of these politicians, they saw that people get riled up. Nobody likes wearing masks. I don't like wearing masks. So, you know, it's maybe that's a really easy thing to say, look, here's this thing you don't like. And we're going to say that, you know, that the left wing is behind it. You know, if you're not well educated and you're not well informed, maybe that sounds pretty good. And if you don't know how to listen to scientists or you don't know where to listen to them, maybe you have no other alternative. Well, COVID-19, the illness has affected my life in many ways, mostly in my efforts to prevent it. So I haven't been out with other people in more than a year. I don't go to parties. I don't mix with people who are not in my direct family. Um, I only go into stores with masks on. Um, I go into doctor's offices with double masks on. So I take a lot of precautions. And the big one is I work from home. So I'm a journalist and I'm used to going out, interviewing people in their houses or outside or in offices. And almost all of my reporting is done now over the phone or on Zoom. It's affected my mental health. It's affected the conditions in the household. There's way more arguments because people are always indoors now. Uh, it's affected me personally because I've had it as well. I've had it in January. I've had it for a week straight. So, yeah, I understand that it's dangerous and people die from it, but there's also a 99.5 survival rate from it. Um, my COVID has made me, I suppose, what I'm going to say first of all, COVID has made me look on life differently. Um, I'm going to be a lot more appreciative of different things. I am going to be very appreciative of my family and my friends and my support network that I have. How has it affected my life? Um, well, I'm very lucky because uh, the type of work I do, I can work from home very easily. And to be honest, um, I've only been into work three times in the city in the last year. So isn't that amazing? How has COVID-19 affected your life? Because it has kept me in my house 
uh, for over a year now. Uh, missing, missing my family, I find it's, it's terrible that I, that I haven't seen either some of my some of my own family of my children and grandchildren and. Uh, I find that all very stressful, but I have to. I can do nothing about it. On account of my my arthritis and that, I can't even go out for a walk, and uh, that's where I find the most stressful thing. I can't meet anybody that I go out for a walk with them, so I find it really real. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will absolutely get the vaccine the minute I am eligible. I'm not worried about side effects of the uh, vaccine. Yep, yeah, absolutely. From my perspective, I would take any vaccine that is on offer. So because any vaccine at the moment, if you weigh up the benefits, risks and benefits, it would outweigh it. Um, Yeah, I think I'll definitely get the vaccine. You mentioned getting the vaccine. uh, Yeah. Both doses. have you any fears for medical implications? Absolutely in not. I will stand in my head if I thought we could move forward with our life. I would do cartwheels up and down the road if I thought it would get us back with our life, you know. And do you think you'll get the vaccine? No. Not, not for the next two years anyways. It's, ex- it's an experiment right now. It's been one year in the t- to be tested on and it, it hasn't even passed animal trials, never mind human trials. Granny, are you going to get the vaccine? Yes, I'm going to get the vaccine the first time it comes. The sooner it comes, the better. And uh, I believe the vaccine is going to be for the over 85, so I will fit into that nicely. So uh, hopefully I'll have no after effects to the vaccine. And I think that's safer than getting the, the COVID. And are you nervous or are you excited about that now? I'm a little bit nervous, just nervous of getting the needle, but I'm more excited in a way. I feel if I had, if I got COVID, that I would never be able to get over COVID. I would, it would because my underlying condition wouldn't, wouldn't between my chest and everything. I wouldn't get over COVID, you know. After we interviewed Bernadette Daly she received the news that she would be going for her COVID-19 vaccine. Little jab. No. You're all done. That's it, Granny, well done. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Hold on a second. Thank you.